So as soon as you finish your college, after your master's in chemistry, you want to jump on to a industry where you can get a job, a high paying job with the right kind of exposure so that you can grow in your career, right? That's a dream of every fresher. Welcome to Sainika and today I'm going to guide you through 10 tips which you should follow if you want to succeed in your career in chemistry. Now, chemistry is an exciting subject. I personally loved it when I was learning and it opens up your mind and it opens a plethora of opportunities also. But if you do not take some important steps in your life, you will not be a financial success in the chemical sciences field. If you are a just a mediocre uh, student or average student also, still you all deserve high paying job and uh, higher salary. But how to make that happen? So I'm going to give you 10 tips for that today. Now the first thing you have to keep in mind is knowledge is everything. Higher the knowledge, more the chances of getting employed. So the first tip can be, okay, you can further your education. If you're not in a hurry to get a job, I will suggest you go for higher education, uh, gain some practical hands-on experience in some labs, do some specialized courses on cutting edge technologies such as cheminformatics, bioinformatics, and consider doing a PhD because after a PhD, your demand into the pharmaceutical industry, chemical science industry will be huge, okay? This industry is nothing like any other industry. This industry is it, it, it opens a big opportunity for PhD candidates. So you should consider that. And for that, you can always write CSI and, it, and uh, you know, for that coaching is always available at Rasayanika. Okay. So that's the first one. Now, the second point for you is, see, you are looking for a job. So, you know, like when you invite someone for a wedding, what do you do? You give an invitation, right? So that you will get invitation card printed. So you'll get nice design, right? The same way when you're applying for a job, what do you have to do? You have to make sure that your CV and your cover letter is well designed, properly designed. It is optimized for applicant tracking system that is called as ATS, which is an artificial intelligence nowadays. And then you have to tailor make the cover letter according to the job description. So if they're looking for HPLC, mention HPLC. If they're looking for uh, some technique, which you have some skills, skill set, highlight that in your cover letter and then justify that you feel that you can be the right candidate. So you have to highlight the relevant skills. That's my point number two. Now the point number three is patience and persistency. You, when you worked in a lab, in a chemistry lab, right? It used to take time, whether it is titration or any other reaction, it used to take a lot of time. You have to be patient, you have to be persistent, you have to continuously to keep trying, trying, trying and one success leads to the desired result. The same way, when you're applying for a job, don't expect that, okay, my first application, people will just welcome me. It doesn't happen anywhere like this. So you have to keep applying, wait for them. If they are not responding in the meanwhile, keep applying to multiple companies, but always you have to look for the right cover letter, the right right CV, the right resume, you have to design, custom make, like my previous point, and then send across. So that is where patience and persistence is very much required to apply for multiple jobs. And don't get dis discouraged if replies are not coming because ultimately it will come. It just takes time. All good things take time. You took time to become a graduate or a postgraduate. So, you know, you should wait. Fourth one is stay up to date. When a new opportunity is coming, a job is coming or a uh, update is coming, any new opportunity is coming, whether it is academia, industry, uh, PhD opportunity, anything. If you're not up to date, you will miss out on the opportunity. So if you miss out on the opportunity, you will never grow, right? So progress is everything. And if you want to achieve progress, you have to breathe progress, dream progress. You have to measure progress. And to achieve progress, you have to stay up to date. And to, to, to stay up to date, where you should go? Rasayanika.com. That is where all the latest industry news, updates, jobs, opportunities, exam alerts, PhD admission, scholarship, everything will come together. The next one which we have is you have to learn new techniques. Now, suppose latest technique which is coming is suppose chem, in, chem informatics. So, okay, let's learn it. So, anything which is related to computers, which can be used in um, chemistry, that you have to learn and apply. So, that is where you have to stay up to date and rasayanika.com is your best resource for that. Now, the next point which I have is publication. So, I'm sure you must have done some kind of hands-on, some kind of projects. You can always take some projects in some government labs so that you can remove the tag that you are a fresher and then you publish paper. So, publishing paper or contributing to research chapters, research papers as a co-author or a, you know, secondary author and then you develop a portfolio of what all research you have done in your, after your master's and then that you can showcase in your CV. That becomes very handy when you are applying for a research jobs or a formulation 
mission development or any kind of QA, QC job because they're going to see whether you have a relevant experience or not. And if you have, that helps them decide faster because many people are applying as a fresher. So what's your difference compared to them? So that is what you have to do. Publish as many papers as you can. The next one which I have for you is improve on your hands-on skills in the lab so you know um, you can either pay a lab and do it or you can um, grab some temporary projects in government labs like csi labs and do it but you have to improve on your hands-on skills the more your hands-on skills and analytical skills are uh, you know better your chances of getting hired is higher so that's one point you should remember next one i would like to suggest to you is uh, you know many interview preparation mock uh, series you can join or you can do among your friends so you have to practice your presentation skills you have to practice research questions like okay if this question is asked how would i reply and make sure that when you are applying you have you're confident you're not like shaky or scared you have to reply with confidence and that will help you that will help you grow in your uh, career no matter wherever you will go whenever you are giving an interview you know i after interviewing like 10000 people in my life so far uh, i will tell you uh, giving interview itself is a skill you know many people don't have so they will just speak anything and they'll get rejected while somebody who is not deserving enough will get selected because his his interview was good so interview preparation is a must for you as a fresher you have to practice 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 interviews take mock interviews with your friends or go on internet find out what kind of questions are asked for a particular company and practice it more often just stand in front of a mirror and reply look at how you are applying and don't be fearful see the person who is in front of you is not here to judge you he's just here to solve his hard work with a smart guy so you have to just prove that you are that smart guy next one which i have is networking now networking is like your network is your net worth you are not a dhirubhai ambani right now you are not ambani you are not adani so you are a normal person so what is your net worth your network is your net worth so whatever you you know, to whom you know who all people you know in the industry that will help you because when you'll go into the industry as a fresher they'll be like you're a fresher so do you have any references and that is where this will come handy so your professors their mentors mentor ka mentor and anybody and everybody reach out on linkedin make friends and get referrals get recommendations as fast as possible attend as many conferences online or offline attend as many workshops online or offline attend as many webinars online or offline and network with those speakers after the uh, session ends on linkedin and say that okay, i really liked your talk and i want to you know connect with you and stay up to date and stuff like that and people will do that right so that is where networking comes into picture and that will help you get jobs faster many a times i'll tell you a secret there may not be a job available uh, on their website of of the company but these guys will already know and they will hire you and pick you so that's where network comes into picture okay the next one which i have for you is analytical skills so okay you have a good hands on skill but you don't have analytical skill so you got the data from the experiment but now you don't know what to do so you should be good in taking the sample taking the data and then analyzing the data plotting graph understanding and coming to a definite conclusion and that conclusion does it align with the um, research question or not that also you have to check and you have to decide so this is very important to improve your analytical skills mathematical skills and graph plotting skills especially excel you should know a, a lot now how do you get all of this at one place right and that is where internship comes that's my next point so when you do an internship it helps you understand the industry it helps you understand the work environment it helps you uh, you know get into the research companies faster and it helps you understand the job role so I I think internship is the answer to all the points which I said. So before you get into anything, just tailor make your resume, do some hands-on, improve your analytical skills, and go and apply for some internships. Because once you are into the internship and once you have gained the practical experience, that will help you get a job. Now I want to clear this myth that you don't you don't need, really need a PhD to do get your job, but definitely it helps if you are willing to sacrifice five years. Okay, you can do it. But if if you are just a MSc with a CSI and you can easily get into the academia for the industry also they will take you as msc fresher but you need to do a lot of background work which i suggested in this video now i'm sure you must be having some questions so put them down in the comment section and if you're not subscribed to rasayanika please go to rasayanika.com and subscribe today link is in the description you can also become a member free member of our telegram group so that you can stay up to date with the latest happenings in the industry and that will be a huge leverage for your career what say let's connect on linkedin as well as telegram thank you so much for watching this video see you soon in the next one till then keep shining bye bye